Hey everybody, this is RC from D-Town TV. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of information on the entire watermark thing that I do. So this is something that I did on one of my books, Get Your Photography on the Web. But I figured, you know what, this is a cool time for us to be able to share. So how does the process go for me to be able to do this and why is this not enough for me? Well, the first thing that I usually do when I want to be able to create a signature file is I'll take a stack of papers and I'll put them on top of one another. Right, so I get a big stack of copy papers and then I use a whole bunch of different pens and sharpener and sharpies and markers to be able to try to find the best signature that I'm looking for. Once I find the one that I want from here, I go, all right, this part is done. And I use a stack of papers here because I like that there's no break in the signature. So by giving it a really, really cushy surface on paper, you can get a really nice, clean signature and nice, clean lines. So I'll practice that for a little bit and then do that. Once I have the signature that I want, then it's off to Photoshop. Inside of Photoshop, all I did here was just kind of scan the signature that I'm looking for. I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in and out just to kind of show you. Those are all of the different sections that I did. And I always scan this at around uh, 600 DPI. I scan it really, really big. Uh, and I scan it in color, right, because I want to be able to get as much detail as I can. But you're going to notice that once you scan it in color, it's going to tend to look a little bluish. So from here, we need to be able to make some adjustments to be able to thicken up these lines. So right inside of here, I'll go ahead and I'll start putting in some adjustment layers. So let's say that I want to use levels. Watch this. By dragging my level slider, I can go ahead and thicken up those lines. And watch this before after before after right i could even for good measure put in a black and white layer here and then that black and white layer will pull all of that color off and get me exactly what i want so those are two different ways for you to be able to kind of play with it and thicken it up you could even do something else right you could do threshold if you go into threshold and watch this as you drag the slider, notice, drag it over to the left, nothing. Drag it over to the right, you start thickening up those lines. Now, once you thicken up the lines, from there, I go ahead and I'll merge this. And I have the signature that I'm looking for. From here, it's probably a lot easier for me to just grab my lasso tool. I'll select out the signature that I'm looking to use. Once I have that, I'm going to copy it go to a new document and inside the document I'll go ahead and I'll paste it keep in mind that that's in a white background so I'm gonna need to be able to use my wand that I'll switch to a wand tool here and I'll click to be able to get rid of this I'll uncheck contiguous at the very very top so that it gets all of the white pixels in the area and hit the delete key now I have a signature to itself what do I want to do with this though keep in mind that this signature when i do this i'm going to go to the image size you'll see that it's two by one two inches by one inches at 200. so depending on the size of what my print is let's say for example if i take this file on lightroom and i'm going to do an export i'm going to export this file let's just call this lucas one if i export this file at let's say 500 pixels actually here let's change the name here lucas one 500 pixels i'm going to export that however that same file if i do another export and i export that file at 5000 pixels oh i should probably change the name let's go ahead and call this lucas two If I were to open this file, I'm going to go ahead and just double click right here. We'll go ahead and open up a file. I'm going to come over here. I'll go ahead and open up Lucas 1, Lucas 2. There's Lucas 1. If I were to just grab this, this file over here and move it over to Lucas 1, you'll see that that has one specific size. However, if I take that file and I move it over to Lucas 2, that same signature here is this big here is this big so in order for me to be able to compensate the fact that I'm going to be using this in different areas 
I'm going to need to be able to take this signature and make it so that I can have a decent size signature in these areas. So for me to do that, what I'll do is I'll vectorize the signature. So mm -hmm. I'll take this exact same file, right? I have this signature here or this signature here, and I'll take it into Illustrator. So I'll save this and I'm just going to call this test. Now, inside of Adobe Illustrator, you don't need to really know Illustrator to be able to do this. All I want to be able to do is take the signature from its raster form, which is just a series of pixels, and I'm going to turn it into a vector shape. That's going to allow me to be able to scale it. And while I could do this with some tracing inside of Photoshop, I think Illustrator really does a great job at this. So I'm going to go to open and inside of here, I'll go to let's see my desktop. I'll open up this Photoshop file. I'll click OK. And there's a signature. All right. So right off the bat, what I want to be able to do is I just want to be able to select the signature. And you'll notice that right at the top, you have a section called Live Trace. Click on Live Trace. It automatically traces the entire signature based on a series of presets. So if you don't find that that's a very good one, you go to Simple Trace. It'll change it. Go to Color 16. It'll change it. Go to Technical Drawing. It'll change it. So again, we don't need to know how to be able to use this. All you need to do is find the one that's going to be the best for you. Once you get it, this is still a vector, right? If I do a command or control Y, I'm a raster. If you do a command or control Y, you'll see that there's no outline. But once I have this set, I'm going to click on the expand button here. Click on expand. And now if I do a command and control Y, you'll notice this is an actual shape. I can take this file now and save this. So what I'll do is actually, I'm not even going to save it out. I'm going to go ahead and take it and just make it really big because now I can scale this without having a problem. I'd even probably so go so far as to go to my document and then change my documents artboard, right? So I'll go over here and I'll make this, you know, 10 inches by about 10 inches. But either one of them is going to be entirely up to you. But you could take this, you can move this out. Matter of fact, you could even take this right back into Photoshop now that I'm thinking about it. I'm just going to copy this file. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go into Photoshop. I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to make this in inches 10 by 2. And I'll paste this file as a smart object. I'll take this. I'll move this around. And I'll kind of get it exactly where I need it. I know I didn't need 10 inches, but I figured. I'll make a big file. I could always use use crop tool and bring it right back into where I want it. Now I want to add something to this. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the crop tool here. Once I've cropped it in a little bit, I'm going to extend out by just cropping in, right? Do your do your first crop and then hold on the alt key. Just drag this out on both sides that extend this canvas. And then I'll add usually some type on this, right? So I'll put some type on this side and type on this side. I always tell people, don't just make a, don't just make a type layer when you're putting it into an image, because that tends to look like you're not trying, right? If I take this image that I did of Lucas and I just put a type layer on it, it, it looks a little low rent. However, people come to expect signatures to have some sort of validity. So when you see a signature in something, I think that that's pretty cool. Now watch this problem. This is another problem that you can have. See this signature? It's really, really big. If I take this signature and I put it inside of the Lucas one, see, I have to do, I'm going to have to do some sort of transforming to be able to get it to work. All right. So what I like to do is I like to take my signature and I'll save it as a separate file. All right. So I save all my signatures here. I'll show you where they are. I have a specific directory where I keep them in here, my print watermarks. And I save them as PNG files so that they could be transparent. 
So from here, I'll just go ahead and grab this, drag this layer out. Now it's transparent and I save it as a PNG. Now, when I'm working with this image, all I have to do is go to File, Place, instead of dragging it over. By doing a File, Place, I can grab any graphic that's really, really big. And if the graphic is really big for the file, it'll still automatically scale the document to fit, scale the signature that I'm putting in to be able to fit. So notice, this signature is a lot bigger than this document. However, it automatically scales it so that you see the transformation handles exactly where it is. I don't know about you guys, but how many times has this happened where you have something in there and you're like, oh man, my signature is too big. And then if you're looking at it like this, then you need to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, do a transform until you finally see the handles and then go, all right, let me bring it back in. Let me bring it back in. So those are all extra steps. So instead, if you just do a file place, file place takes that and no matter how big it is, it always scales it to the bounds of the document. Now, at this point, all I'd have to do is transform it down and move it over to a corner. Now, that's still a little too big for me, but make it even smaller still, right? Because the key here is just to identify yourself. It's not necessarily to distract from the image. Right? Once I have this all set, I'll grab my opacity, make my opacity really small, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, I think generally everybody, everybody, I think is under the same agreement, right? If you go into your letter U and inside of here, inside of Photoshop, there's the big no, no, right? There's the big copyright logo. This is a watermark, right? Everybody hates this. You grab this, you take your fill, you put your fill really, really down. This is what you're not supposed to do to your image, right? Having this watermark in flaming red sitting somewhere right, at any section where it intrudes is a watermark, right? The watermark is supposed to deter people from actually using your image. This is very, very different from this. Right? What this is doing is just identifying that you did it. It's giving a little bit of authenticity by having a signature, right? If you just use a type layer and you type in here, that looks like you didn't try really and doesn't have any kind of finesse. I don't want to detract from the image, but I want people to know that it's mine and I want people to know that there's a little bit of care that's gone into this. Whether you do or don't, entirely up to you. The cool part about it is that now you know how to do it should you want to do it. If you want to check out any more of my ranting, feel free to just go. You can go over to gplusrc.com. Uh, that's usually where I'm doing stuff.